This week on The Gun Room, I'm here in Switzerland with the head of V&T USA, Tim Nicola. Now, Tim, I know you guys have got two different flavors of 9mm carbine. Uh, I always get confused between the two. What's the difference? Okay, understandable. We get that question quite a bit in the United States. Um, the real answer is not a lot, uh, but I'll try to clear up the few differences that there are. Other than money. Other than money, right. So the APC-9 was the uh, first weapon that we designed, and a lot of the uh, cost for engineering uh, went into that. So a lot of the those engineering costs were saved on the GHM-9 later on. Um, some of the improvements are more evident in the Gen 2 uh, Pro Series in the APC-9 and GHM-9 Gen 2. The uh, main differences are the uh, non-moving or non-reciprocating charging handles that are on both sides of the weapon, um, the improved ergonomics on the, low on the Pro lower receivers, the bolt hold open has been moved from down here in the mag well to up on the side. Um, you also have the ability to uh, change lower receiver. So you'll get a pro lower receiver, which includes a removable pistol grip, the improved ergonomics. Um, you can choose one that takes our proprietary magazines, Glock uh, magazines, or SIG 320 magazines soon. Um, some of the other differences, refinements, I guess, between the APC-9 and the GHM-9 are, are, are the coatings. Like the uh, APC-9 has a Teflon coating, which um, helps with corrosion resistance sure. and um, just the smoothness of the operation. The bolts have a little bit of a different treatment to them. The APC-9 bolts are, are hardened and nitrided. Um, also with the APC-9 series, since the beginning, you have the captured recoil spring. And in the GHM-9, you don't have the captured recoil spring, so you have to be a little bit careful during the disassembly. Otherwise, you're chasing it all the way to the room? Correct. Yep. Now, all of these weapons come in the United States as pistols, so they have like kind of a bat cap on the, on the end. And most people don't know this, but those bat caps are actually pretty useful. They have a, um, a spanner wrench insert that you can take out and fit an M4 stock tube or uh, a brace, pistol brace that uh, you can use there. A lot of people don't seem to, to notice that feature. Um, and then beyond that, both platforms have a variety of different stock options. You know, you gotcha. folding stock, telescopic stock, like the one here on the GHM-9. But yeah. in the US, you'd have to file a Form 1 for that. Correct. But SBR, right? There's also a br uh, brace options of almost all of these. So we have a SB Tactical um, brace that's very similar to this one, mm -hmm. a um, B&T brace adapter that fits a tail hook for the telescopic version. Um, so, so you the, really don't need to. Yeah, you, yeah, you don't really same need to. Same functionality, essentially. Yeah. Right. Okay. So on the GHM-9, I noticed you have a little bit more modularity in the system than you have with the APC. Correct. So um, here in Switzerland, they sell all of the models, you know, the, the compact, the standard. There's an intermediate length and a very long one with a 16-inch barrel, um, really long rail system with M-lock slots all the way down them. We've started integrating M-Lock slots in both the GHM-9 and the APC. Um, you won't see them on the uh, APC because they'll be underneath the side rails that are screwed on, but they're there. So in the United States, the, we made the decision to import the, the two most popular models, the compact and the standard size, and then offer the different front ends like the SD kit and the um, long version as options. And you can just slot those in, right. crank just, up a couple of screws and away you go. Yep, you got a screw on the top and bottom of all, almost every single one uh, and then you take those off. We, we sell the kits uh, to you know and tools to remove the front ends and instructions and so forth. So first one we released was the SD um, which works just like an MP5 SD. It has the ported barrel mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, suppressor reflexes over, over top of it. So it makes pretty much any 9mm ball ammunition subsonic? Correct. Gotcha. Yep. So cool. those, are, right. those are the differences. So what's the difference in shooting between the two? Really, there's not a lot of difference in shooting. It's just the, the intended purpose. So the APC-9 was, was, we didn't want to include a, a removable 
hand guard because we wanted to keep the rigidity and durability there. Anytime you have something that's removable, you have the chance that if you drop it or whatever, it can become damaged sure. uh, a little bit easier, uh, easier. So the point of the two systems is each one was developed for a different reason. The APC-9 for military and law enforcement, of course, you can still buy them as a civilian um, in pistol form. And the GHM-9 was developed to be more uh, man Barbie, if you will, you know, that you can configure it how you want for. Gotcha. Gotcha. In terms of price, what's the difference between the two? The price can vary depending on the configuration model that you buy, but it's somewhere between $800, $900. Uh, That's a considerable yeah, saving. It is. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Well, you'd expect the cheaper model to be, you know, a little bit more, you know, cheap and cheerful in terms of fit and finish and the uh, whole shooting experience. What's, yeah, am I going to experience anything like that? I don't think so. Um, you're still going to get the same shooting experience because BNT doesn't, you know, make anything really cheaply. You know, I've noticed. Uh, right, but the uh, GHM9 it was designed from the beginning to be a volume, um, you know, high volume production series mm -hmm. weapon, and uh, we also gained some of those, um, some of those costs back with the sale of accessories. So when somebody goes and buys a GHM. Um, their, their wife's not going to kill them for spending so much money. That's a good thing. But they can come back and buy a handguard later, next paycheck, and a, and a uh, uh, you know, whatever other accessory, a suppressor, or so forth uh, later on without killing the bank. Cool, cool. All right, well, I'm going to load up some magazines. I'm going to send some rounds down range, and you guys are going to find out what the difference is on the other end. Okay, let's shoot these guns. First off, the APC-9. Now, this is a Glock magazine lower. And I've shot the APC-9 quite a bit before, so I'm pretty sure I know what to expect. Yep, super soft shooting. It's a very short stroke action as well, so unlike, say, an AR-15-based platform, you don't have that long 223 case you need to get out of the way. This is based around the nine millimeter. Super smooth, that hydraulic buffer soaks up a lot of recoil. So even though it is just a direct blowback, there's not a whole lot of shove in the shoulder. Now let's try the SD version of the GHM. Now this is a proprietary BNT magazine. Again, short stroke. getting a little bit of gas back in the face because of the can on it, but pretty damn civilized. Now, in terms of value between the two of them, I'd be hard pressed to make a judgment call. Now, the APC-9 is kind of like the Rolex of subguns. I've shot it in full auto version, uh, but in terms of value, the GHM-9 is pretty tough to beat. And in fact, between the two of them, given the fact that the GHM-9 has a little bit more modularity and I can put a different barrel in, put a different fore end on the, this and making it into a PCC gun, I'd be kind of inclined to go with the GHM-9 just because it is a better price to value relationship for me. Now, you might have a different opinion, but whichever one you choose, they're pretty nice guns. Obviously, you've got that Swiss quality going for it and they're available in the US right now.